Now we have a very important segment coming up and it's called What If, ladies and gentlemen. And it's with pleasure that I jump on over to our host with the most, <laughs> Miss Nadine Ellis. And Nadine is the Senior Marketing Director at World Financial Group. I got it right. Senior Marketing Director at World Financial Group. And she's here tonight to share loads of information with us on all these platforms that are carrying the way in our show tonight. Welcome, Three Noel and IG. I mean, good evening and welcome. Nadine, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Can you hear me, Wayne? I hear you loud and clear. I hear you very well. Good. Um, how are you today? I am doing fabulous, Wayne. How are you today? I'm doing amazing. Thank you, Deborah D. Commenting that's a great interview earlier. This is going to be a very fascinating conversation, ladies and gentlemen. I really hope you all tune in. Tell somebody, share it to somebody. Tell them to come check this out because what if, what if, you know, mm -hmm. oh, I'm dead, no what? <laughs> Let me think about, about it. What if? Yeah. So, Miss Nadine Ellis, welcome. And um, tell us a little bit about your background in finance. I know you didn't start yesterday. Oh, no, I'm still 25, remember. So no, I no, just started. Not about your age. You, start, you were doing this since you were crawling. So we know that. But just give us a but little you bit. Know, just, yes, just a little bit about myself. Yes. Um, 12 years in the financial industry, really loving the industry and the platform I'm in because it's all about education. You know, if you follow my Facebook, I have talk about we're on a campaign to educate 20 million, fam 30 million family by 2030, and we can do it by ourselves. So I'm excited of what we're doing as a company because we are, that's why I'm here with you, right, Wayne, to just talk about this educational platform. So 12 years in the financial industry, have one beautiful daughter, I will always talk about her because it's the one child I have. So just wanted to, to learn more about finance than anything else. Although I went to school for it. I went to school for accounting and business management. But, you know, you go and you learn about it in the books, but you have to go and get certified more and to fully understand how to get ourselves in order. So that's a quick nutshell. About Very me. good. And so... Um, this journey has brought you to this point where you feel it very necessary to share your knowledge with the world at large. And, and you know, um, finance is, is okay. such a volatile thing. Mm -hmm. You think you got it. I mean, you, all you need is an accident. All you need is an illness. And you see how quickly savings disappear in America mm -hmm. and the world. So... From what perspective do you want to share with us? I'm going to turn it over to you right now. Take it away. Well, you know that what if. That what if, what if I've known this information? What if I understand about budgeting? What if I was disciplined about taking action within my finance? Those are things that if, what if I have done that? So my question is to everyone is our, our state to say, can we stop saying what if? And let's do this action plan together. Can I know for a fact, um, I'm an immigrant here and my, my parents brought me here and I saw they work very hard over the years. Yes. And what I saw that my, my parents wanted a big change. So they're working hard here and they're sending things back home to make sure that the grandparents or other family is taken care of. But not taking the time out, even one hour out of their day to sit down with a financial professional or a financial consultant, financial advisor, just to sit and see if their roadmap for retirement or just like what you just said, um, Wayne, the uncertain time, that those are things that I want us to really talk about. You know, that uncertain time and when we retire, whatever it is, what are we planning for? We work so hard. 
Um, we're planning for children college if we have children, right? Like yes. you have one beautiful daughter in college and another one almost there, you know, so you're planning hard for that. But who's going to take care of you? How are you planning for that? So there's a lot of planning that we're we're doing, but can we sit down and take that moment to really look into our finance and our roadmap? That's something that I really want us to really look into. And this month is Life Insurance Awareness Month. Oh, okay. Good to yes. know. Yes. yes, it's the Life Insurance Awareness Month. And you wrote a wonderful book, I don't know how much of your audience have really purchased your book, Wayne. Um, that is telling your story of what you went through, right? Yes. So I know you mention it every time, but can you mention the name of your book again for them, Wayne? I'm Dead Know What? <laughs> I'm Dead Know What is the title of my book, ladies yes. and gentlemen. So if you haven't picked that book up as yet, so I'm doing that promotion for Wayne <laughs> right now, because what you need to purchase that book because it's somebody experienced what they have gone through. Right. But life insurance is not just about for debt. What if it is there's life insurance that have living benefits within life insurance. So I want to touch a little bit about the different type of life insurance. Is that fine, Wayne? Yes, please go ahead. All right. I, I want to hear too. So, uh, and you're going to have to talk to me. I don't like talking to myself. No. All right? So you, got you gotta, you have to talk to me a yes. little bit because you have gone through some of my workshops. So I know you know these answers, right? Yes, ma'am. So let's talk about what's term policy. That's the first policy type of insurance that was created a term policy. What is term policy? Do you remember, Wayne? I'm putting it on the spot, everyone. Do you know what term policy is, Wayne? Uh, <laughs> tell me. You see, that's the thing is you do know and most people know, but because you're so busy with your everyday life, you're not focusing on that. And that's not your focus. That's my focus. My focus to remind you what it is. So term policy, it's nothing is wrong with a term policy. It has 30 year term. That means it will expire when you in the next 30 years. That's And that's not the max. Now they have a term policy that goes to 40 years, but you have to be younger, not our beautiful age. We can't get 40 year term policy. But they have up to 40 years. But what I've seen in the years that I, I'm in the financial industry, even before that, I knew that it will expire. So if you get it, you're 20. By the time you're 50, you don't have any policy. You're, it's ended. Yes. And your health now has changed. Things is happening. And that's what I keep seeing more and more that the person are outliving their term policy. Yes. But the premium is very low for that term policy. The idea for term policy is to get that term policy, cover yourself and build your wealth. Meanwhile, you're over the years. But life is happening that sometime you're building your wealth and things are happening that will wipe out your wealth sickness, what you just said it, sickness, accident, can just wipe your wealth out in a second. So your wealth, you're building it, but then now you get to 60, you get to 70, you get to 80, and you don't have the wealth that you would have wanted. And, and it's gone. And you can get those term policies for different, different reasons. Then they came out for whole life policies. Whole life policy, is a permanent policy. It does expire at age 100. Not It doesn't go to the life of you. If you pass age 100, it will expire. And we have workshops across the board that will go in depth. Then they came out with universal life policy that you are getting a percentage of interest of what the market is looking like, but it's a fixed interest that they give you on that policy. Then they have variable universal life policy. Variable is directly in the market. 
if the market goes up you get a you get a high interest on on the gains if the market crash you get you lose just like a 401k that's the best example for what that one i could tell you but then they have the index universal life policy that's the hybrid one that if you if the market goes up you will get a, a certain amount we call a cap, like say 13%, 10%, 11% on your money. Then if the market crash, you don't lose what you have gained. So you can use a lot of those permanent policies for living ben benefits, even the temporary one, they do have term with living benefits. So, and of course you have final expense. Those are the 10,000, 20,000, 25,000 small whole life policies that are out there. So we have to be educated and see which one fits you, Wayne. Which one yes. will be the right one for your family? That's where you sit down and ask those questions. So I see you have a question, Wayne. So go ahead. I'll turn it's, it back to you. It's more of a point. Yes. I know of persons who were young and in great health mm -hmm. and bought term, which lasted right until illness kicked in. Mm -hmm. So they're losing their term insurance, and then they got some medical challenges now that came on over the years. Mm -hmm. That's making it challenging to get into another term or another kind of insurance, like whole life, like you're mentioning. So sometimes we got to be careful in that respect, too, that, you know, we're not getting younger. Yes. Things do happen over time. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we do want to make sure we're making the right decision at the right time because a term policy does look good when you're young and, you know, yeah. And a premium. Yes, the premium is good. Mm -hmm. But when you have a term policy, you can convert it to a permanent policy. There's a conversion policy. When certain term policies, when you purchase, you have to make sure you can convert those term policy to a permanent policy. <coughs> Excuse me. Because now if your health is declined, your it can now it's it doesn't look at your health, but it does look at your age. So you convert it to a permanent policy, like a whole life, universal life, index, universal life, any permanent policy. But now if you're 60, 70, what does that permanent policy premium will look like? Right. And you're on a fixed income. Yes. And that's where the that little that little thing that you said comes up like, oh, I can't afford it anymore. Um, yes, you can convert it, but the conversion of what you will get it for, you might cannot afford it anymore. So those are things that we have to think about when we're looking at different type of policies and understand them. Yeah. Any Absolutely. other points you want to share? Um, no, uh, actually... That right there is is pretty much it. Okay. Um, and one thing that I wanted to share, and many, many things, that with, with insurance policy, we have to think about how it's affecting not just us. What about our next generation? Like your book, right? Your next generation. It is yes. not, it, it, we have to understand that when that, when you get the beneficiary, get that money, what can they do with it? And I look at myself that right. I, I want millions. When I mean millions of coverage and the reason why it's not just for my daughter, I want to, that money that will come into my family, will we will design it a way that it is, it keeps going to the next generation and the next generation. It's to build wealth in your family. It is one of the number one estate planning vehicle that you can do for yourself and for your family. Like I hear people, Nadine, I'm not leaving nothing for my family. I, I have a house. I, they will get the house. They will get this. But people fail to understand you leave properties to your family. Guess what? They got to pay taxes on there, a lot of estate taxes. And that's why we even see people lose their home when they inherit a home because the, the taxes that they have to pay is too much and they can't afford it. Or 
you did not per pay off that home, Wayne, and you leave it to your daughters and it's not paid off and they can't put, they, the mortgage cannot go into their name, what will that happen? Mm -hmm. Now, these are things that we have conversation. I have conversation and let people know that it's not for you. Don't say you're going to leave your home. You're going to leave this. Think about the taxes and they might not even get that home. I've seen people lost their home that they that they have inherited because they can't pay the estate taxes. So understand that is that estate building for yourself and for your next generation. And now the gener your next generation is if they they were a millionaire, if you were a millionaire, Wayne, now your next generation is a multimillionaire. You know? So we got to look at those things. Now your next generation is a multimillionaire. You know? I'm here so myself. We gotta okay. look at those things. Right. Right. Yes. So um a little little stuff going on here. But yeah, <laughs> um it's always fascinating when I hear um, the, the different ways this can go. What I'd like to hear though is for anyone who is tuning in right now, mm -hmm. who you know wants to know how they can hear more of this kind of information outside of this setting, just where could they go? Well, um, they could call me. You could visit my website. My Facebook page is my name, Nadine Ellis One. Um, my Instagram is the same. You can find me on Instagram. You can find me on Facebook. Um, uh, you can email me. All my information is on Facebook, is on Instagram. You can email me and we can have one-on-one -on -one consultation. I do not charge for the consultation. We can do in person. We can do on Zoom. We, you know, Zoom, we can Zoom all over, right? And it doesn't matter what state you're in, the conversation is still a broad, broad conversation that I can have no matter where you are. Um, so you can, my number, I know you will share my number in your face, on your Facebook, my number and my email. We can always find me on all those platforms that you can, you can contact me. Plus our company do have have workshops five days a week. And it's at 2 p.m., 8 p.m., and 10 p.m. at night because we have different offices in all 50 states, including Puerto Rico and Hawaii and Canada. So we have a lot of information that you can receive that it is complementary to the from the organization, from the company. So we will make sure you get that information. But you know what, Wayne? They always say the information is there, but can you spend the time to come and get that information? It's not, it's literally 30 minutes, 45 minutes, uh, say an hour tops that you can plug in for yourself and get this information. It's time for us to, you know, we say, what if, what if I know this? What if I did this? What if I do whatever? But we need to take that time out. And I do have a time on weekends that you can plug in and I will share my my email address and my yes. calendar. Repeat your phone number, number, please. Sorry it's, to interrupt. But that's okay. That in it's 770. 770. 383. 383. 2398. 2398. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, good. So I did, I, I just put that out there. All right. Yes. I do have a question from a listener. Yes. Why can't life insurance benefit the living and not just for beneficiaries? Oh, good question. Because that's Shout out what to Tracy and Clark with that question. So Tracy, that's what we were taught that is only for debt benefit only. And it's not. Most insurance policy have um, long-term care rider. They have terminal illness rider. They have chronic illness rider, um, critical illness rider. That's that you can trigger those riders when you're alive. 
plus the cash accumulation you can use when you're alive. So it's not just for the debt benefit or beneficiary only, it is there for living benefits that you can pull money, you can take loans out, you can withdraw. And those are things that we could talk about, but they have insurance policy with living benefit, Tracy. That's a very good question. Thanks for asking that question, Tracy. Right. Okay. So um, thank you, Leroy, on it. Um, I'm going to yes, have to do Lee. some engineering afterwards about that, <laughs> sir. But um, very good information. And I want to let the audience know that you will be on every uh, last Thursday, Wednesday. Why do I keep thinking Thursday? <laughs> you planted right. Thursday in my head. Ms. Yeah, Lennon. no, that's all but right. Sorry. <laughs> what if Wednesdays? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, every last Wednesday, what if? And and really, if you um, if you want to uh, dive deeper into stuff, you could come ready with your questions because. Nadine has the background and the resources. And even if it's something that's probably a little out of her league, she can do referrals to the right person, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. This whole segment, when it comes on each month, is to educate us yes. on some of the things, that the tools and benefits out there that we can buy into. You know, one of the things, Nadine, that just struck me? Mm -hmm. Entertainers. Yes. Entertainers don't pay into a pension. Ah. entertainers okay. don't pay into social security a lot because mm -hmm. they get paid in a way where they might file taxes or do something, but they're paid as independent contractors. And so it takes a lot of discipline for an entertainer, which is one of the reasons why I say I don't like when people try to talk down their prices mm -hmm. because after they perform on that stage, if they're doing business right, there's a whole lot of stuff they got to go do with that money. Yeah. And so they have every right to charge what they charge for their talents. However, a lot of entertainers do not have, you know, mm -hmm. stuff put away put for away their... In, for the know, rainy days, for the yeah. uncertain times. And they ill along the way. And next thing you know, we're doing GoFundU and GoFundMe and all kinds of stuff to try and take care of somebody, you know, mm. who did so much for us during their careers. And yeah. so I'm going to say, say, um, say this, that this is something, this is the kind of stuff I'd like to see artists, entertainers try to look at too. Because when you're healthy and going well, these things don't matter. But think about if Stitchy had a $500,000 policy somewhere. Yeah, with living benefits that Think with about, the cash accumulation. Yes. Yes. When an artist goes on stage like the young man at 52 and mm -hmm. collapsed and died. Let's think about if he didn't have something, you know, and if you get ill, if you suffer a stroke for some, you know, where can we draw money from? Because no, you can't go on stage and perform and collect the next no. show. No. And so I'm throwing that in there for any entertainer might, that might hear this or yeah. watch this, that this too is for everyone in, including you so yeah, yeah and it's I'm happy definitely you're doing for this. everyone you know <laughs> i'm a financial <laughs> professional so is we're talking about insurance policy and i love when you set talk you know because it's life insurance awareness month but when you're a 1099 even if you're a job you work at a job guys you have to not just depend on your job to take care of you you have to also put things aside individually and business owner entertainers are business owner you have to really look at every vehicle that you can think of because you can open up your own retirement funding you can do sep IRA simple IRA you can do annuities you can do Roth IRA insurance policy you can create your own portfolio for yourself and that's where I help people to diversify their portfolio. You have, you're putting some in your tax null, tax null vehicle, like your stocks, mutual funds, all of that. Then you go into your tax later vehicle, like your SEP IRA, your SIMP IRA, your annuities. Then you go into your tax advantage vehicle, your Roth IRA, your insurance policy, and you're tapping and you get interest in 
each one of them, by the end of the year, you have already created, you maybe get about 28, 30% if you're going from each vehicle. So you have money for uncertain times. You have money for your retirement. You have everything that you could tap into. And those are things that I really, you know, I have friends that are entertainers and I'm like, you need to really do these things. So you open up a different, different now topic that we're going to go into next next time win awesome 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 yeah that that's good that is good to know all right um the the there's so much to this and so many can benefit um nadine that i'm glad again that you're doing this and i'm glad that the wayne all show can add to its great wealth of information by having you on to share this with us. I thank you, platform. Wayne, for giving me the opportunity. You know, I've been on your show more than once. This is the opportunity to just have this segment. Um, the last Thursday, you know, I called you. I said, Wayne, I need to dump some of this value more often, not just once in a while. So I thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to be on your show. And I'm very grateful for this opportunity. Thank you. <laughs> You are most welcome, Nadine. Thank you for all you do as well. You have a great evening. I look forward to what you bring next month. Yes. Take care. Enjoy the rest of the week and keep try to keep dry. It's very rainy here in Georgia. <laughs> I see that. I see yes. that. We'll be doing my best. <laughs> yes. Take care. All right. All right.